Yes, so this is about how to create maps like this <laughs> with a printer like this. <laughs> and first me, I'm Hartmut Holzkreifel. I live in Bielefeld, Germany. Where? Yes. <laughs> exactly. Um, I studied electric engineering and computer science in Bielefeld. <laughs> and I've been an open street mapper since 2007. Uh, next weekend it's actually exactly 10 years and I work for a living as a database support engineer for MariaDB and I always love to have uh, a city map whenever I had a new flat just to know where I am and what's outside when I leave the door and also got this printer here rather cheap. It was on old HP model and when the, its successor came out, uh, this one fell in price from about 1200 to 1600 euros to only 400 euros. That's when I said, okay, I'll buy it. I don't know whether it will work for me, but <laughs> I'll take the risk. And after a while I was really able to print full format maps with it. And about two years ago I was asked for uh, from a, by an organization working with uh, refugees in my town whether I could create neighborhood maps for the different shelters they were operating. So this is not a shelter neighborhood map, this is a neighborhood map for my own flat. And that is hanging on the other side of the big map you've seen before. And this is to show when our guests, when we have guests in the house, where in the neighborhoods, oh, the bus stops, the bakery, and stuff like that is. So, when I was first asked to produce these neighborhood maps, the very first plan was we just take a screenshot and then we edit it with some graphics program and we are done. But as you can see, this works for small paper formats, but not for uh, big formats as the pixels become too big. And it would only work if you had a very high resolution screen to take a screenshot from. So plan A failed almost immediately. So we needed to plan B. And Plan B was on the OpenStreetMap website. We have this share icon here where you can export an image as PDF or different formats. And you can select the size of the map you want to export here. And that already worked a bit better, but still. Whoop, there's a slide missing. So the problem here was there's only one map style here. You can only get the original open street map st style, not even the three other map styles that are on the OpenStreetMap.org website itself. And it is pretty hard to map this is the pointer <laughs> to get the right aspect ratio here so that the export really fits your paper. And it's also bit of guesswork to get the right map scale here so that you don't have resizing artifacts on the map. So plan B also failed, sort of. And then plan C was to look what other options are there. And at the time there were a few different web front ends that would create printable maps. But the only one that really worked out as I needed it was Maposmatic which was a project that was developed by some French guys from about 2009 to 2013. And it uses the Mapnik renderer just as the OpenStreetMap website itself does, so you can use the same map styles. And it provided more than just the default style. I think the original one provided four or five styles. And it has a pretty easy to use web front end and 
in the end it can produce different formats like so it can render on a single page or it can create multi-page booklet, uh, booklets and it can render as PNG or as PDF or as SVG. And SVG was interesting because it could then take that into Inkscape and then put all these side markers you've seen there on the markers on the map. And so that sort of worked out, but it was also a very time consuming process. And also the problem with the original site was that it was still running, but it was not really maintained. So the code base was pretty old. And especially the style files used were also pretty old. So you still had the old OpenStreetMap style where highways were green and stuff like that. Just like OpenStreetMap looked in 2013. So in the end I decided to set up my own fork of the site. And to get all the software and all the style sheets used up to date because the original instructions for installation were a mix of you need Ubuntu 10.10 with these packages or 12.10 with these packages and all these packages you need to compile yourself as the versions in Ubuntu are not current enough and now it works with original packages of the box no need to compile anything anymore all the style sheets are up to date. There are some additional style sheets and also an overlay feature where you could put a second style sheet on top of a first one. You see that later. And I applied lots of small fi uh, fixes and small improvements too. So this is a quick run through how to create a map with this web interface. First, you can either search for a city and only the, the dark entries here are valid. The gray ones are not usable. But here we have a dark one for Passau. Uh, these slides are all about Passau because that was where I gave the talk last time. And Passau has a river, St. Augustine doesn't, so the maps will look a bit more pretty. So. The alternative is instead of just selecting a city name and have it, uh, the map auto-sized is like in the OpenStreetMap export, you can define your own map area. And then the next step is to decide the layout, which is either single page big map or you can print a multi-page booklet. And for the single page formats, you can also have a street index on the right side or on the bottom side. Then we have a wide collection of style sheets now. I've tried to support every uh, Mapnik style sheet for which I could find an open repository. I have some example renderings in, uh, in a minute. And there's also a collection of overlays that I will also describe in detail later, but there is stuff like overlays for fire hydrants, for max speed, for different types of routes, for hiking, cycling, mountain biking. And what you see there is uh, adaption of the surveillance by surveillance website that allows you to map uh, surveillance cameras in OpenStreetMap. And then when you've selected how your map is supposed to look like, you then select the paper size, and whether you want to have it portrait or landscape. Sorry for the German slide here. <laughs> uh, optionally, you can upload one GPX track you want to have on the map as an overlay. And then in the final form, you can define the, the title that is printed on top here. You can select the language that is used for the copyright notices on the bottom. And optionally, you can give a mail address that I use to send you a notification when rendering has finished with an URL where to pick up 
the results. So you can either sit in front of your computer and wait for the rendering to finish, or you can have an email sent to you when it is finished. So, and this is a quick run through of the different app styles. This is original OSM style as it is on the OSM website. I also have a black and white version of that. We'll see that later when we come to the plugins. That it's often better to have a black and white base layer when you put additional stuff on top. This is the German uh, style sheet that is used on OpenStreetMap.de. France also has their own style sheet. Um, what's special about the French style is that they do very detailed rendering of sports sites like football stadiums or golf courts. Uh, this was a style sheet that came with the Mapposmatic software itself. And then there are a few more. This is the humanitarian project style, so it is also on openstreetmap.org. The hike and bike map style puts a bit more focus on, uh, on hiking routes like, like here, so foot, foot passes and bicycle routes. And then this is a style from Russia that focuses on being more useful for, for bicycles. This is the open topo map that tries to mimic the style that is used in German administration for official maps. And this is the open river boat map. It has a focus on stuff that is important for people who travel along rivers with their boats. So it has special uh, features for rendering harbors and stuff like that. Unfortunately, in that part of Paso there is no harbor, so we don't see that, but <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, then there is a special map for skiing called Pista Map. Again, you don't see any skiing features here in Paso, so here I did a second rendering of a different area. So this is uh, the village of St. Moritz with all the different ski routes and all the transportation for skiing put on top of the map. And you also here see that it uses hill shading so you get an idea of what the landscape looks like. And yes, and there are some fun styles that were created by some people like this one is supposed to look as if you had drawn the map with a pencil by hand. This is supposed to look like a floor plan of a spaceship, but it doesn't work at this zoom level. Okay, so th these were all the base maps you can use with the software right away. And then there's also a collection of overlays. The first one I did was the, the fire overlay. And this one has all the fire departments and all the fire hydrants. So it is useful for fire departments to quickly see where there is the next uh, fire, uh, the next hydrant to get water from. And then, now yeah, we can skip that. That is was the very first version of that style sheet. Then this is a style I created in to look similar like the Ito. Uh, speed map, so it renders uh, max speed, like th uh, green is uh, zones where you're only allowed to drive 30 kilometers, orange is regular 50 kilometers uh, city limit, red is uh, 80 to 100, and everything that's still white doesn't have any speed information in the map yet. So this is a good thing to find where you still have gaps where information is missing. Uh, this one, uh, especially like this, is an overlay that renders all hiking routes in an area. Uh, 
the style is inherited from the Waymark Trails website. So you can have printed hiking maps like <laughs> this one that is usually also hanging from a wall in our flat that has all the hiking routes in our city. Most of them we trucked ourselves. <laughs> yeah, then there is what you've also seen in the preview, the surveillance map. And so this shows a section of the map where we have four different surveillance cameras, three dome cameras that can scan 360 degrees, and one fixed mounted camera that only has a straight viewing ang angle. And this overlay is actually special as it is not easily possible to do this in Mapnik itself because Mapnik does not have any feature to draw circles or circle segments. So, and from the database side, it's not easy to create circles either. So, Oh, I'm running way too fast, I think. <laughs> so, so we've seen circles and circle segments here, and this is not possible or not easy to do in Mapnik itself, or to have the database generate uh, circular shapes. So, what I actually did here is to bypass Mapnik completely. So, Mapnik renders the base map. Then we take the result and then use uh, Python and Cairo graphics to put all the camera information on top in Python code, not using a Mapnik style sheet at this point. And for this, I have created a simple Python a plugin interface to extend the rendering component of Mapposmatic. And so when you look at the source code, you have the OCTs map is the rendering component of the website that has a layout folder where all the rendering for single multi-page rendering is in. And then there is a new subfolder now, rendering plugins. And there you can implement additional renderers like the surveillance renderer that have to implement a uh, bad layout here. So such a plugin only needs to provide one Python function named render. This gets a renderer object and in the renderer object is all the information about the map itself like uh, the extent of the map, the upper, lower, east and west bounds the scale factor and things. It has a database connection that you can readily use to submit your own database queries. And as a second parameter, it gets the Cairo graphics content, uh, context that the additional rendering shall now happen on. So I did not put code examples in the slides here, but if you're interested, you can have a look at the code. So all this was just an extension of the regular Mapposmatic interface as it had already been developed in France. But I also wanted to do these neighborhood plans. And for these, originally I did an SVG export, then loaded the SVG in Inkscape, then did all these, let's flip back to that, oh, too many slides. <laughs> So this one here. <laughs> Originally, I would render the map just on this size, then manually would put in all these sidebar items, would manually put in using Inkscape or another vector graphics program to put in all these markers, set all these square information by hand, and put the you here circle by hand. But it turned out that Inkscape is not really good at, uh, at 
working with really large SVG documents. So it sort of felt like back in the early days when I had my first 386 with Coral Draw and two megabytes. So you pick an object, you drag it. A few seconds later, it appears at the new position. You see, oh, I dragged it a bit too far. You drag it back. And so very time consuming process. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that's almost like a something I want. <laughs> so this was one of the early ones I did, and what I did is I also extended the renderer that I can pass in a a file that has all these marker positions, then automatically puts as an overlay the markers using Cairo graphics, the you are here marker, auto generates the sidebar index and everything. And there's also a web interface for this. It's currently it is a separate thing. And here you can put all the different markers you want to have on the map. And you have a selection of different uh, standard icons. And when you've placed all the things you want to have in this neighborhood plan, then there is a little print icon here, and that will automatically, no, nah, wrong button, will automatically uh, determine the right bounding box needed so that all my markers fit, so you don't even have to select that. And after you submit the print, usually one or two minutes later, sometimes it takes a bit longer, you get back a PDF that is ready for printing and it already has all these marker and sidebar information correctly put in. So once I had this finally done and working, Creating such a neighborhood plan didn't take uh, an hour or two like it used to take before when I did it manually with Inkscape. But now it is just a matter of five minutes at best to put all the points of information you want to have on the map and another five minutes max to get the printable PDF back. So big time saver. And the even bigger advantage for me is now I can explain to other people how to use it and to use it themselves and just give me the PDF once they think it's complete and I print it and I do not have to do all this editing myself anymore. Whereas the original workflow I couldn't possibly explain to someone else. So. Now, I'm running my own instance of this that is publicly available. The original Maposmatic uh, instance, unfortunately, had several database failures over the last two years and has now completely been offline since May or so. So we're back in the situation where there's only one public instance, but what I did is I also provided means so that you can run your own local instance of the full software stack. And why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you have special customized style sheets that you want to want to render that I do not support, or you want to be able to create maps offline, or you maybe want to uh, keep your results private because so the, the neighborhood plans, these are private on purpose, but the uh, general map matic web uh, interface has a list of all the maps it ever rendered. And the last hundred or so are even preserved as downloadable, so everyone can download whatever map you created. Or maybe you want to work on this software yourself and want to uh, provide bug fixes or uh, add new features and need a test environment for this. And if you wanted to do uh, to set this all up by yourself, you would have to install Mapnik. 
you would oh. have to gather all the required style sheets and the extra files oh. these need. So for example, oh. there are extra shape files for coastlines. Uh, sometimes in OSM data itself, coastlines are broken and you have large parts of countries flooded. So we do not take uh, coastlines from the live database, but from uh, special exported uh, shape files which have been tested to be correct as far as rendering goes. Or you may need height information like for hill shading or for having height contour lines. These are not in OpenStreetMap itself, but are imported from uh, space shuttle radar data provided by NASA. And lots of other stuff. You also need to import OpenStreetMap data into a local postgres database using an XML or PBF uh, planet file if you want to support the, uh, render maps for the full planet or a smaller extract for the area you're interested in. And you need to import this into the database with the OSM to PGSQL import tool. You may need to add additional OpenStreetMap style, uh, OSM to PGSQL import style files that define which fields should be in the database. And you need a local web server that provides the front end. So a lot of things to set up. And so for this, I created something that almost works out of the box. At least it works for me. <laughs> works on my computer. And that is I created a virtual machine setup using VirtualBox and Vagrant. And for this, you just need to uh, check out that project from uh, GitHub. And in the project directory, you have to provide an OpenStreetMap data file that needs to have this special name. So it needs to be in the portal binary format. format or you want to have that anyway, as these files are smaller than the XML files. And you can, uh, for example, download extracts from GeoFabric.de. They provide uh, OpenStreetMap extracts for all countries and for Germany, also for all states and for the larger states like Northern oh. Westphalia here, also the, the districts. And then you just say Vagrant up and depending on how fast your machine is and how fast your internet is to download all the extra files that are needed. It takes about half an hour to two hours to get ready. And once it's ready, you... Okay, there's a slide missing. Once it's ready, you connect to localhost uh, port 8000 with your browser, and you have the same web interface as on the public side, and also most of the style files of the public uh, side ready to use but you can only render maps for the OpenStreetMap extract you exported. So on my public side, I have the whole planet. For my local testing, I only have the district of Detmold where I'm living. Yep. So what have I learned over the last two years working with this stuff is paper maps are a bit more complicated to create than uh, map on screen when you use open layers or leaflet. But all the necessary tools to create a good paper map are there and are open source. And having a map front and that simplifies the process is a very good thing to have. So if you just want to have a standard map, you can skip over most of these dialog fields I showed you. you just select city name, paper size, and have it rendered. And it was harder than originally expected to get this working, especially to get all the software components up to date. But now that it all works, I'm pretty happy that I did it, even if it was harder than expected. I think it was worth it. And there is. Oh. One of the slides ended up in my speaker notes. <laughs> so there was supposed to be one more slide that has future plans and open issues. And 
one thing I have, I have uh, contour data now, so height contour lines for all of the planet. These were uh, donated by Open Pista Map, who had done a very good full import for their website, and I could get the database table with all the height information for the planet from them. Because importing all these NASA data yourself is a very time consuming thing. The open snow map, uh, people say it took them several months and several tries, that sometimes took a week for each try, each iteration to get it done perfectly with all faults. So I'm happy that I didn't have to do that <coughs> too. But what I do not have yet, or only have for a very small area, just for uh, Switzerland, uh, Austria, and southern Germany, is the, the hill shading. This I want to extend to the full planet. Uh, then I have been thinking about uh, bring your own style sheet feature. So right now it is only possible to upload a custom GPX track as an overlay. But in theory it should also be possible to allow that you uh, upload your own MapNIC XML style sheet and have that rendered instead of the prepared styles. Um, the user interface still could use some improvements. Um, uh, I especially want to merge the two front ends for general printing for, and for this neighborhood plan thing. And for that I would especially need that uh, render plugins can not only draw on the map but also add their own index terms. So that you not only n do not only have the street index but that the plugin can add and by the way all the fire departments in the cities are here. And some limits I've been hitting. One is when you want to have a professional printer print a map, these usually only accept PNG or JPEG, no vector images. And some of them have ridiculous size limits, but even if they allow for large, large, for large PNGs, uh, the maximum resolution I can offer right now is 300 dpi, as at higher resolution, Cairo graphics hits hard limits as it can only produce uh, PNGs by a maximum size of 32,000 by 32,000 pixels. So that would require uh, changes in the low level tools used. And one thing I would especially like to have would be plans that do not have north up, but that are rotated so that you have your direction of use. Like you, some cities have these orientation plans where you have you are here and also not this is north but this is the direction you are looking in. To. So something that is on top of the map is a place you can reach by just walking straight. And Mapnik unfortunately does not support this yet. It can only mostly only flip and have south on top for the southern hemisphere. But you can't arbitrarily can't uh, do rotation at will. The only thing you could do was it would be to transform the map data when importing it into the database already. But then you had one fixed rotation and would not be flexible. So, and unfortunately, there was someone who had wrote, had written a patch for this in the past. But the patch is referenced in the MapNik bug tracker. But when they switched to uh, GitHub, they also imported all the, the bug tickets from the old bug tracker into the GitHub bug tracker, but all the attachments got lost. So the ticket is there. There is a post, oh, I have an experimental implementation for this. And here's the patch. And that is a dead link. <laughs> and the person who submitted the patch does not respond to email or anything. So somehow this code is totally lost, unfortunately, I'm afraid. And, and one third thing is right now when you have a professional print service, 
want to have a map printed, you have to download the PNG from my website, then upload it at their website and put all the extra information in. And I thought it would be nice for print services to have a direct interface. So that they get some additional business and get, and I could just put an optional field in, forward this uh, redundant map to that print service for printing. But the two services I contacted so far would only be interested if you would produce at least 100 posters per day. And <laughs> that's more like what I produce per month. <laughs> so somehow commercially they are not interested in it and you can print uh, maps at a professional service but you have to go to all the steps yourself no automation in that yeah that's about it and as you see I have the printer here with me so if you want to have a map of your neighborhood or a special place I can offer to print one in the breaks here not during talks obviously <laughs> and now it's time for questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm already rendering uh, a <laughs> okay. map on your <laughs> okay. server. <laughs> okay, so any questions? So, if you want to create render jobs, this is the URL. No, no questions. questions. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm still around if you have questions later. <laughs> or want a printed map. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you for your okay, great thank you. talk. <laughs>